On this episode of Mixing Some Magic, I'm joined by my friends Dan and Jordan to talk about our top favorite things at the Disneyland Resort. We're talking about different categories like rides, food, attractions, and even what rides we wish would come to Disneyland from other Disney parks around the world. It's going to be great. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Melissa with Mixing Some Magic. I'm a Disney planning expert and I'm here to mix a little magic into your day. Each week, I share Disney vacation planning tips, park strategies, and a little bit of Disney history sprinkled in. Of course, I like to include lots of Disney magic. Join me. Let's mix in some magic. Hello. Welcome. Thanks for being here. I am over the moon excited right now because in less than 24 hours, I will be heading to Disneyland. And I just can't wait because this visit is extra incredibly special. So when this episode drops, I will be at Disneyland. I will be getting ready to start my very first ever VIP tour. If you don't know what a VIP tour is, don't stress because next week's episode is going to cover everything you need to know about VIP tours because this might be something you want to add to your bucket list. So when this episode drops, head over to my Instagram stories because I will be sharing all about a VIP tour as I am on the VIP tour. It's going to be great. I will also be doing some hotel tours while I'm there and covering the kickoff of Halloween time at Disneyland, which begins September 1st. So lots of fun things going on. I really can't wait. This VIP tour is a once in a lifetime experience for me. And I, oh, I hope I can sleep tonight. <laughs> I'm that excited. Let's talk about some quick Disney news. The biggest thing that happened is Disneyland announced a change to their early entry for on-property resort guests. So as it stands now, on-property resort guests get to get into either Disneyland or California Adventure Park 30 minutes before the park officially opens, and they get to choose which park they will attend. Disney has just announced the beginning January 20th, 2024, they will be changing their early entry policy for on-property guests. Beginning January 20th, you will no longer be able to select which park you go to. You will go to alternating parks. So one day it will be Disneyland, the next day it will be California Adventure, and it will just alternate. So I find this news kind of upsetting for Disneyland Resort guests. If you are an on-property guest, this is bad news. If you are staying off property, then this is good news. So let me tell you why. It used to be back pre-COVID that Disneyland had early entry for hotel guests, just like they do now, but they got one hour in the designated park and the days alternated just like they will start doing on January 20th but early entry guests got an hour in the park and it was pretty great now Disneyland has shortened it to 30 minutes which was annoying but the fact that they got to choose either park was really helpful because it spread out those hotel guests between two parks and so 30 minutes was pretty adequate because guests were spread out between the two parks and it wasn't very crowded. Now Disney is saying that they're only going to be allowed in one park and still they only get 30 minutes, which is pretty frustrating for on-property guests because that means it's going to be much more crowded and they're really not going to be able to get much done in those 30 minutes, which is really too bad. Plus, Back in the day, pre-COVID, it used to be that Disney had a separate entrance for early entry hotel guests so they could get into the park really quickly. That went away and it hasn't come back. So as it stands now, early entry guests have to get in line with rope droppers and then go into the park with them. And so they're in longer lines entering the park. And so most of them, unless they get there really, really early, aren't able to take full advantage of their 30 minutes. So most only end up having 15, 20 minutes at best. And then you throw in the crowds of having all the early entry guests in one park. And it really, I mean, it's really not a benefit at all for on-property guests. So I think this is just a shame because on-property guests pay so much money at Disneyland. And now they're basically getting zero, zero incentives to stay on property. So 
I don't know, I've had several people message me and say, I have a proper or a vacation book from property and I'm canceling it and I'm going to save hundreds and hundreds of dollars and just go stay at a nearby hotel. And I don't blame them one bit. I think Disney needs to make it an hour again for early entry guests and they need to give them back their separate entrance. Those are just my thoughts. Now, if you are a rope dropper and you are not staying on property at Disneyland, this is good news for you because that means you can select your starting park to be the park that early entry guests are not attending. So say early entry is starting at Disneyland, you can make sure that you make your park reservation for California Adventure. So that means when you rope drop, you are gonna be the very first people in California Adventure. This is great news because you're going to be able to rope drop much more efficiently because there won't already be early entry guests in the park. So. It's good news if you are not staying on property, bad news if you are staying on property. Um, I will definitely be checking this out in January when it changes and I will have much more info to share with you. All right. I am so excited about our episode today. My friends, Dan and Jordan, who are podcasters, are joining me to talk about some of our favorite things about the Disneyland Resort. It was really fun to hang out with them. I think you're going to like this episode. Let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll get right into it. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Mix and Some Magic. Welcome. I have Dan and Jordan here on the podcast today. Thanks for being here, guys. Thanks. Thanks for having us. I'm super excited. Why don't you guys start by introducing yourselves? Why don't you go first? I'm Daniel. Uh, I used to love Walt Disney World more. (laughs) And then he converted me. I did. (laughs) And then I'm Jordan. And I've always... Disneyland's always been in my veins. So tell it, you guys have a podcast. Tell us about your podcast. We do. Yes, our podcast is Disneyland Forever with the number four. Um, and we just talk about all things we have Disneyland. A cute cat that just came <laughs> oh, cute. What's your kitty's name? Chloe. Cute. Yeah. I love it. So yeah, we uh do th- we just cover everything with Disneyland, like Disneyland tips, Disneyland just fun stories, a lot of our trip reports, and your like, impossibly hard trivia on Tuesdays. And I yeah, on Instagram we like to do trivia Tuesdays. <laughs> they are well, hard trivia questions. They're it so might fun. Be hard, but I hear from people all the time that they really enjoy it. I'm like, okay, we'll keep it going. I don't know them, so <laughs> I'm one of the ones that gets it wrong. <laughs> they're so fun though they are fun so i want to ask i want to start off when i have guests on i like to ask them some disney questions so we can get to know your disney side a little bit so first off what is your favorite disney park disneyland disneyland okay <laughs> disneyland. Disney. <laughs> me too you guys have been to you just got back from Tokyo Disneyland. Mm-hmm. Have you Tokyo. been to any other? We've been to Tokyo and we've been to Paris and then obviously Florida. Right. So Disneyland's still your favorite. I love it. Mm-hmm. Who is your favorite Disney character? Oh, you have uh, yeah. you have a I have, list. I have a list of uh, what is it? Up to sixty three? I think. I think so. Right? Something like that. Uh, number one is Bruni from uh, Frozen Two. The this little salamander, blue salamander. Oh, yeah, I eyeball. forgot about him completely. That's his favorite character. All of my top, well, like most of my top 10 are very obscure characters, and that's just the way I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my, my favorite, if I had to bring it down to it, would probably be Stitch. Yeah. If I had to just pick one that's overall favorite, I'd say Stitch. He's from Lilo and Stitch? He is, hence the title of the movie. <laughs> He's a good one. I do know who Stitch is. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, how about your favorite Disney attraction? Uh, well, I, mine's Space Mountain. Anyone who listens yes. to our mm-hmm. podcast learns really, really fast that my favorite attraction by far is Space Mountain. I think I still like Big Thunder Mountain the best. They're both good. But Big Thunder Mountain at night is the best. 
It's so good. That is true. We don't get to do it at night very often. No. When your eyes adjust and you can actually see the bats. And (laughs) we were in line last time and there was a kid that was vehemently telling his dad, yeah, dad, they took out the bats or like, they're not there. I'm like, no, it's just daytime. It was just really bright. They're still there. (laughs) They're still there. All right. I thought of this question today and I'm super excited about it. Okay. What is your first memory of visiting Disneyland? <laughs> Ooh. Cuz some people go when they're little, some people don't go there till they're adults, but what's your first I memory mine. of Disneyland? <laughs> so, um I was 5. Uh we had been to Disney World in the summer and then we went to Disneyland and I, my dad and I both, I think it was my dad's first time and he was like 40 something or whatever. And I was like, we were both said, what, why, where's the castle? <laughs> the Cinderella castle. Uh, yeah. And we stayed at the Disneyland hotel. I have pictures, uh, from like on photo paper from on photo paper, whatever the, <laughs> from film <laughs> thousands of years ago. And so I was going through those and that's how I sort of remembered those. Like, yeah, that was my first time. I remember that. That's um, so fun. My, mine. I know I went before this, but I do remember that I was at Disneyland and I know it was early, early nineties because I remember being in Tomorrowland when it was still all white. Mm, yeah. Um, before they had touched it, the people mover was still there. There's still a um, speed ramp up to Space Mountain. And I was scared of going on everything. Yes, you were. I, I would close his eyes on everything for some reason. Yes, because it was scary. But uh, <laughs> my mom was being very patient. And well, and she couldn't really go on Space Mountain because uh, she that made uh, made her motion sickness act up a little bit too much. So everyone else was going on Space Mountain. I was the youngest. And so my mom was trying to figure out something she could take me on that I would go on that wasn't a dark ride. And so I remember sitting there next to the people mover track um, and my mom telling me, let's go on star tours. And I remember her having to have like a very in-depth conversation, you know, normally with little kids, you don't want to ruin the magic, but she Mm -hmm. realized that she had to have a very in-depth conversation with me about what a ride simulator was before I would agree to go on it. Wasn't this just a year ago? And so probably. (laughs) And so I finally agreed when she's like, we're going to feel like we're going somewhere, but we're not. I said, okay, we'll go ahead and go. And when I got off, I remember going, mom, that was actually really fun. And so she was like, good. We got another, another He was so there. bright. He closed his eyes on Indiana Jones. Why would you ever do that? Because I was scared. <laughs> but just for it the record, it, more it scary. makes it more scary when you have your eyes closed. Well, but you didn't look into the eyes of Mara, though. I did. So That's true. There you go. And why, were you, why was your ride punished? I guess it's all the Everyone others. else was. <laughs> Everyone else did. They all ruined it for him. I did. I mean, they did. <laughs> Whatever. It would have just been a... A jaunty little... <laughs> you just go see the Azamara, go back. <laughs> little stroll through the temple. Well, I remember I going when I was about three, and my first memory is going through the... Was it, what was that sky ride called? The Skyliner? Oh, the, I think it was just the called? sky ride. The sky ride? Yeah, going through mm-hmm. the Matterhorn and being so nervous because you could hear the Yeti like howling when you went through and hear the wind yeah i was just sure that the yeti was gonna grab us as we were going through there that was a long time ago did you even go on that ride it's more than 10 feet in the air i I did (laughs) and i was scared to death of it especially when we go through the matterhorn i was always so So it wasn't just it wasn't just me who was scared of it no the sky ride at disneyland it was like a little bucket yeah no, the Skyliner is the terrible thing at Walt Disney World that yeah. never moves. Yeah, but we're talking about the Sky Ride at <laughs> Disneyland. It wasn't called the Sky Ride. I can't remember. I just remember it be called the Sky Ride because it was Skyway yeah. or something. Sky it could have been Skyway. Could have been Skyway. Skyway to Fantasyland, See? Skyway to Tomorrowland. Oh yeah, that, that needs to the, be a trivia question. The um, posters. Yeah, I think it was Skyway. Yeah. What is on your Disney bucket list? Joining Club Thirty Three. I have to say Club Thirty Three is up there. <laughs> I mean, we do want to go Joining? to all the parks, but we we would love to join. But even going to it, it would going, be a big be thing because we've never been. But we we do want to do all the parks, but hopefully that'll be within the next couple of years. So yeah, That's I think those awesome. are our major ones. You guys better get on the the list then. Isn't it like a twelve year list to join Club Thirty Three? A wait list? Well, we've been on the list. There was there was a list, and we were on it for like four or five years, and then evidently they changed how they do it, and so you had to be referred by an existing. So we're member. off the list, even though no. we were on the list. That's not fair. I don't know. Dang it! 
I also don't have money well, for it because we go to Disneyland well, too yeah, much. <laughs> that's that's the other problem. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, so tell us where can people find you? So um our Facebook is just Disneyland Forever, just regular. Our Instagram is <laughs> D-I-S-N E Y L N D four E V R. We're missing a couple of vowels. Because <laughs> there is some lady that's like a thousand years old. No. <laughs> took the regular one. She's just somewhere in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she took it and we can't use it, we can't but, use it. but yeah it's disneyland forever missing an a and an e <laughs> uh, those are the main places are facebook and instagram she looks good okay, well i will put little links little. in the show notes okay so that people can find you because you guys are great well today we are going to be talking about kind of our top three favorites at disneyland so i made a list of a bunch of different things and we're all going to share our favorite thing. So I'm hoping that maybe if people are looking for like ideas or just fun things to do at Disneyland, maybe if they have our top three, it'll give them some, I some ideas of things maybe they want to try for food or attractions or entertainment, things like that. Now, can we not pick, what if one of us has the same thought as somebody else? <gasps> that would never happen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just quickly no, think. I think that's okay because then, you know, it's really a favorite. That's true. That is right? True. I think that's okay. I think that'd be fine. What is your favorite Disneyland park in Anaheim? Disneyland park in Anaheim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have the same one. <laughs> well, actually, my first question is your favorite land at either Disneyland or DCA. Do you need some time to think? Yeah. So I can say it, and every time I say this, people look at me weird, but you have to let me you have to hear me out. No. So okay. my favorite is Tomorrowland. Oh, and what? I know what everyone's going to say. That's what everyone says. Like, why? Like, look, I am the first one to say that it has its problems. But I love the history that's there because there are so many things that have changed so much and yet also haven't changed in all the time that's been there. And I love Disneyland history. Like, I love going past the Star Wars launch bay and being like, I remember when that was Interventions. And I remember that used to be America Sings. Before that, that was the Carousel of Progress. It was like, I love those sorts of things to it. Um and I also just love, I mean, obviously Space Mountain's there, so I love Space Mountain. But then I love the idea of what Tomorrowland was meant to be and still could be. And so um, that's that's a lot of what goes into me, just really, really loving it. But trust me, I am gonna, I am the first person in line who says it needs some love. But I For still sure. walk through there, and I just absolutely love it. Do you think that it will ever get the love that it deserves? I think so, but I don't know how long it'll take. I was hoping for it last year at D23, and that didn't happen. So, mm -mm. What about you, Dan? Probably the way the land is and way it looks would be Adventureland. Mm -hmm. I hate going into it, and I hate it when it's crowded, but I love the look of it and the attractions in it. <laughs> it is so impossible to navigate for some reason and always gets crowded, but it looks cool. It does. And you do really it enjoy uh, Bengal Barbecue. Yes, it's one of my favorite <gasps> places to eat. Yes, so yummy. And the store there, and yeah. Love the attraction. I'm going to say Fantasyland if it's not crowded. <laughs> you take away all the people <laughs> and Fantasyland would be my favorite. Just the look of the storybook look of all of the attractions with the castle there in the backdrop. I just love it. But then when it gets crowded, it's not my favorite. But we're just pretending there's no people. <laughs> yeah, when there's the stroller graveyards, it's not so fun. But the first thing in the morning, though, it's really fun. It is. Yep. Or later at night. Then True. It's nice. What about your favorite snack at Disneyland? So I already mentioned mine, which is churro. Uh, but I will also say that I'll, it usually also will change seasonally because they get all those seasonal churros. It's mm -hmm. like we were just there and I had that April, December churro. Strawberry. Oh, so good. That was so good. That's my favorite one that's there currently. But I just love there's something about a Disneyland churro walking around the parks. I doesn't I don't care if it's a regular churro. It's it just hits the spot. I don't know. Every time I have a churro that's not a Disney churro, I'm just like, this is wrong, and I really should stop eating it just out of defiance. So you're not a fan of like the Costco churros? Mm, they're okay. They're fine for what they are, but when I'm like dream, when I hear churro, I dream of like the Disneyland churro, and nothing meets that expectation. Yeah, the, I don't know how they make them or what they are. It's but a particular company amazing. they get them from. I don't know. We should buy that raid, company. Raid or buy that company. <laughs> 
Good yeah. idea. Uh, I don't know if I have one favorite. I love Dole Whip. I love Blue and Green Milk. I love Candy Apples. Oh, there's so many things. I don't think I just I have wish, one. I wish they would cut the apples for you. That really bothers me. That is true. Because they'll cut them for you at Universal Studios, and then you can walk around and eat them all sliced up. But Disney Disney mm-hmm. World, I swear we've had somewhere. Do Disney they? I don't know. Now that you say that, somewhere I somewhere want... we've been. Disney I feel like we have been somewhere. They said you want it cut. Yeah. Maybe it was Disney World at like Animal Kingdom or something. I don't know. Well, I'm going to be boring and say popcorn because that's something I always come back to time and time again, especially the caramel corn. The California Adventure, because they have make the fresh caramel corn at that one stand by Award Wieners, and it is amazing. I would give you that with the caramel popcorn. I usually am just, I, I don't understand a lot of the popcorn f- fanaticism, because most mm-hmm. of it's just like regular pop secret. <laughs> but I will give the caramel popcorn because it's so fresh. Yes. It's and so that does good. make a big difference. I'm not yeah, the world's biggest it. fan of popcorn, period. Like, I'll eat at the movie theater. You do but... like caramel corn, though. I do love caramel corn. And, See, uh, I just love popcorn. Kettle like, corn. if I had to choose one food to eat for the rest of my life, I, popcorn might be it. I might pick popcorn. That really? Is, that is my yeah. idea of hell. <laughs> <laughs> Eating popcorn for the rest of your life. <laughs> okay, let's talk about favorite quick service. Hmm. It's hard for me because my favorite quick service is currently closed and was not coming back. I oh, loved the French yeah. market. So I'm mm-hmm. re- I'm really Hopefully excited for Tiana's, Tiana's but similar. I, I know. Do you think Kurt- the food will be similar? I don't know. But I'm, I'm hoping like, something like, I don't know. Right now, I'm just so excited by what it looks like. That it's like as long as yeah. the menu is halfway decent, I'm excited. Right. <laughs> um, I think I would say, I'm just going to claim this before anyone else does, Pim Test Kitchen. You mm-hmm. do love the Pim. I love Pim Test Kitchen. It's probably one of the most limited menus for lunch <laughs> in any of the quick service places, but it's so good. Like I still remember the very first time that I tried their PB cubed uh, sandwich that nothing about mm-hmm. that sounded like it was going to work with peanut butter, banana, mm-hmm. and bacon. And I was like, <laughs> well, I'll just try it just for the heck of it. And I ate it. And I'm, every time I get it, I tell Dan, like, you are not allowed to have half of this because I want it. <laughs> <laughs> and it is delicious. That did remind me of the Choco Smash Bar. And the Choco Smash Bar is one so of my good. favorite treats too. Oh, I was gonna say I, the first first time I went there, just I went was there by myself, and I just wanted to try all the food. And then I got a Choco Smash Bar, and I'm like, I'll just mostly taste it and probably bring like the rest home. I ate about two thirds of it by myself, and I was both <laughs> upset that I had done that, but also very satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> They're so good. And I love that they have the freestyle Coke machine over there because they have a ginger yes. lime diet Coke that I love. Ooh. So good. Ooh, that and sounds so good. good. We love the Pingo Dose. It's just mm, yeah, green, that's good right, too. But... <laughs> green vanilla so Sprite. Green. But... I, know, I didn't don't think, ever think I noticed that you said ginger lime. Yes. Yes. Ooh. It's amazing. I have to get it every time I go. It's so good. I wish they had more freestyle Coke machines yes. around the park. I know. Well, and the one by um, Soren doesn't have the ginger lime hmm. Diet Coke. You can only get it at the Craftsman, at their freestyle, or at Pim's. Huh. I'll have to look for that yeah. next time. Yes, that sounds will. delicious. It is. What about you, Dan? Probably still Bengal Barbecue. <laughs> we were just saying yeah. earlier. <laughs> it's a little pricey, but so good. And now they've actually expanded their menu for more than one item. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they added... Uh, they have like that um, bacon wrapped asparagus, asparagus skewers. Vegetable and then a different meat. I can't remember which one, but so good. Yeah. I'm going to say Bengal Barbecue too, because it's just... It's different than regular park food. You don't get, it you is. know, yep. there's just corn dogs and different. chicken fingers everywhere. But and you feel it, like maybe you're three. healthy. Yeah, right. <laughs> you feel, you do feel a little bit healthier. <laughs> you do. And then you're like, I can eat the whole Choco Smash and it's fine because I had such a healthy dinner. And I, have you ever had the jungle julep there? So good. No, I haven't. Is that good? Oh, it's so good. It's like a frozen drink. I don't know why they call it jungle julep. It has nothing to do with a mint julep, but it is yeah. delicious. It's safe. Frozen mm-hmm. purple amazingness. I'll have to try that. I was disappointed in their tiger tails, so I didn't They're think those dry. were amazing. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. wanted them to be better. How about your favorite table service? If you're going to make a reservation and sit down, where, where do you want to go? Napa Rose. <laughs> yeah? 
except for our last visit. We sat, we were sat by the line that you check in at. It was not that magical, <laughs> but oh, it normally yeah. the food's great, and the and the main dining room is so amazing. It's such a great ambiance. That you have to sell nice. your soul to Satan to pay for it, but it's still right. really good. <laughs> but worth it, totally worth it. Um, my favorite is actually the Cafe Orleans. Mm, yeah. I love it's I was telling Dan when we were last there the Cafe Orleans is one of the few uh, table service restaurants where they could sit me inside or outside and I don't care because I like the mm-hmm. ambience in both places and I there isn't anything on that menu I've had that I didn't really enjoy mm-hmm. um, I even the last time we were there I had the the Monte Cristo as you do and um I asked if they could do it like with a side salad and I don't even know what the salad was on it, but I wasn't expecting much. And I was like, this is almost better than the palm tree. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. And of course I love their mint julep. And so the fact that it's on tap, I'm like, just keep it coming. We're good. Uh-huh. <laughs> Would you have liked Steakhouse 55 better? Steakhouse 55 used to be my favorite until it closed down. Mm, I forgot about cool. Steakhouse 55 till you said that. Curse That's you, sad. Disney. I yeah. Know. That used to be my favorite. That one was so good. Dang it. I'm going to say Lamplight Lounge right now. I do like Lamplight Lounge, fun. especially their brunch. That one's good. Their I brunch really like amazing. the brunch. Yeah. The avocado toast is amazing. And if you can get out on the patio, that's really nice too. But the whole the ambiance is fun. Just the Pixar themed, I like. The music's. The music's a lot of fun. Peppy and fun. Yes. I was weirded out okay. the first time when we had to sit next to people. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like okay, it's a little close. <laughs> well, we didn't know. And I don't, I don't like to sit in the the chairs that look like they're like living room chair furniture. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? And you sit yeah. down, and the tables like up here at your chin, and you're like, I don't know how I'm to gonna like, eat <laughs> this. <laughs> I don't like sitting there, but everywhere else is fine. Okay, who is your favorite character to meet in the parks? Oh, that that was hard. Oh gosh, you liked a lot of the villains. <laughs> We've met villains a lot of Grove. That was pretty awesome. I don't know if that's the same thing as like a meet and greet, yeah. although they they can be really fun to talk with, like at Halloween time. Um, okay, this will sound stupid. Uh, probably Darth Vader because I was scared crapless, and it was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been terrified of Darth Vader ever since I was a kid. And I, the one time I remember for sure was I had a, a Chewbacca thing that I'd bought that he, he talks and like moves mm-hmm. and stuff. And, and Darth Vader was interrogating him too. It was just so magical. <laughs> <laughs> so I love scary. that. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think of some of mine. Um, oh, you know who, like, <sighs> Some of my favorite experiences I've had, they're characters that were limited time and they don't necessarily have them very often anymore. But one Mm -hmm. of my favorite interactions happened to actually be during Oogie Boogie Bash. And it was with Mr. Knight from Moon Knight, (laughs) the Disney Uh Plus series. Because I was dressed like him already, but he (laughs) just had this really big, long conversation. He was teaching me how to pose appropriately. And it was just, (laughs) it was super, super fun. And the fact, even though he had a mask on, he was still allowed to talk. And so it was a really easy interaction with him too. I Although wish, when you wish when you met the Scarlet Witch, you were as giddy as a schoolgirl. I was because I waited for her <laughs> again, and it's another character they don't have out there. They don't have very often. Uh-huh. It's like more seasonal. I'm like, dang it! I like all the. Let's just say Marvel characters. There we go. Marvel characters because That's they're a good super one. fun, and it's always really random who you're going to find. Well, I like to meet the characters that don't talk to me because I get like super flustered when they talk to me. <laughs> I don't know what to say, <laughs> but so like anyone in Toontown, I love meeting Goofy or Minnie or Mickey over at their house. I think it's so fun to go to Mickey's house, go through all of it. Same with Minnie. But when they talk to me, then I, it throws me off. Like at Oogie Boogie last year, then Sid is out there talking it's to so from cool, Toy though. Story. He, he was so scary, though. He's so he was cool. talking to me and I was like feeling all flustered and He's like, what are you going to do? Call my mom and tell on me? And I was like, oh, my gosh, I am going to call your mom. And I had to keep reminding myself that he was just the first pretending. Ever, but Was it the first ever Oogie Boogie Bash? That we for, I don't think it was the first ever. Or he was we, The Sid we had was so good. He's like. Somebody was asking, the kid was asking him, like, why do you torture kid toys? And he says, I don't torture them. I make toys better. 
<laughs> just the way he's got to talk. It's so good. It's so good. Dr. Facelier, the mm, one year. Really so good. Uh, yes. So you mentioned. Well, last year, Dr. Facilier, is that how you say it? I always say uh-huh. it wrong. Mm-hmm. I was dressed as Tweedle D, and my sister was Tweedle Dumb. And he asked me which one I was. And I said, I don't know. I think I'm dumb. I couldn't remember which one I was. And he laughed so hard. And I was like, oh, see, I always mess up these character interactions. <laughs> you were mentioning about Toontown. Have you ever seen Clarabelle out? Yes, she's so fun. We saw her the other like, on our last trip. We were waiting in line for Runaway Railway. And we saw there with meet and greet for Clarabelle. I'm like, now that's super fun. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, they need more random characters. Tokyo had yes. like all the random characters, and then Disneyland sometimes does. So well, they're getting better. A little better. I wish I still haven't seen Pete though. Remember how he was out like right at the beginning when Toontown reopened? I haven't I, ever seen him. I've seen a few people recently sharing a few more pictures, but I guess he's not out as often. Yeah, I wish he was. Yeah, we took a picture be. of him sometime, but yeah, he's great. All right, what is your favorite dark ride? Alice in Wonderland. That is his favorite movie. It's my favorite movie. <laughs> so mm-hmm. he quotes it beginning to end. The movie, not the ride. <laughs> no. um, but I, I also just think it's super fun, um, especially since they added like the little plus, like, since they plussed it most recently yeah. a few years ago. And I've always loved the fact that when you come out, I mean, it used to be more obvious years ago that you were on a leaf, like descending oh, back yeah. down. It's, it's not, not as obvious, obvious at anymore. All, huh? No, but yeah. it's still really fun to come out. And then you have really, really good aerial view of that part of Fantasyland and kind of look mm-hmm. over the people on the Matterhorn, which I've never understood fun. why you go outside. But... <laughs> I've never cared. It's just so cool. I've really, I don't know I've either. always really enjoyed yeah. it. I love I've, that one too. On, yeah, I don't know how they do that Cheshire Cat. Um, There's some of them where I'm like, I don't know how they do these effects the inside there. Effect. It's fun. It's Disney magic. It is. Does that only count Fantasyland rides? I don't think so. No, because I think like Monsters, Inc., I would say that's a dark ride. Yeah. Because it's taking you through a story. Okay. What ride are you thinking of? Uh, Indiana Jones. but it's I don't think that's ride. a dark ride. It's inside mm-hmm. in, and there's darkness. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Probably now that they changed it, uh, Snow White's Enchanted Wish. It is the first time mm, we did it. That one's like, amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. become yes. so adorable. It really is. And you can smell. Have you ever been able to smell the lilacs at the very, very end? Sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. But the last scene, like right before you go through the exit where Snow White's standing on the hill with the birds and the flowers, you <laughs> breathe really deeply. Every once in a while you can smell lilacs. It's you have my a very favorite. Good nose for things. I should try that one. You've got to take real deep breaths. I mm. usually am hyperventilating because I'm like <laughs> trying to breathe in real deep to smell it. I'm the cast member at the unloading area is like, is this person okay? Are you okay? Yeah. I'm, I promise I'm not making it up. Because well, not a lot of people you. never notice, but you've got to just, if you're paying attention, then you can usually smell it. When I'm it's driving, amazing. I can tell if someone's smoking like six miles ahead of me. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will be able to tell it. <laughs> I think my favorite is probably Peter Pan because that's my favorite movie growing up. Favorite villains, Captain Hook. I love. If there was no line, I wouldn't mind that either. But I know that's a bummer. That's the worst part of it. But it's so good. It's even better at Disney World though. With the their queue is amazing. The queue is so cute there. Yeah, so good. Okay, what about thrill ride? We already know Jordan, your Space Mountain forever and always. What about you, Dan? If I don't say Big Thunder, then I would say uh, Incredicoaster, probably. That's what I thought you were going to say. Yeah, Yeah, I would go Guardians. I used to hate it, but I've had to go on it over the years. Just every time I'm there, someone wants to go, and I suck it up. (laughs) And it's just grown on me more and more, and now I love it. It's my favorite one. Why did you used to hate it? Just that up and down motion is Mm -hmm. so scary and unsettling, but now I've just embraced it. And now I love it. It does feel different now. Now that's like more jovial and with the like, <laughs> you're bouncing yes, along. With it is more music. fun now that it's Guardians over Tower of Terror, I think. We just loved Tower of Terror, so. Right. We yeah. actually still prefer the theming of Tower of Terror better. Guardians is still yeah. a fantastic ride. I mean, right. I think where sometimes people think that we're saying that we don't like Guardians at all. It's great. Mm-hmm. It's wonderful. Um, if you don't like maybe... Um, 
maybe just when you're talking to her about Tokyo, already told you this, but if you don't love that big up and down motion, Tower of Terror in Tokyo doesn't move. It doesn't go as fast. <laughs> it goes really. It, oh. He is <laughs> so lying. <laughs> it still pulls you down, but it doesn't pull you down as fast. Interesting. So like, we hmm. wrote it and we're like, huh. This is decidedly different. It is weird theming, though. <laughs> yeah, but there's this Tower of Terror, right? Yeah, it's but just it's different but Tower of Terror. It's, it's just a, yeah, it's a unique story. Oh, interesting. All right, what about your favorite underrated attraction? Ooh, I know you're going to say the Golden Zephyr. I'm never going to say the Golden Zephyr ever. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> I just found out the Golden Zephyr is not gold; it's silver. Yeah, it's Someone gold. pointed yeah, that out, and I've never so noticed dumb. that. I think they just get the get name it. because of the Golden State, but yeah. I guess, but they should have painted it gold. Come on. I know, missed opportunity. Yeah, not even a Zephyr. Mm. I don't know what a Zephyr is. I don't know what a Zephyr is. <laughs> I don't know these ones. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to go with this because apparently I have to just like sing its praises even though everyone hates it. Um, I really enjoy Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin. Yes, you do. And I know so many people, I think you were actually one of them. Was I like it can just it can just go and I'm like I so enjoy it I think it it helps that I really 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 love the movie a lot uh-huh. yes um and I do love spinning rides so that goes <laughs> that does help a lot although I'm always like then just don't spin <laughs> we actually found yeah. out in Tokyo that a lot of people don't even know he can spin because it says spin really? in English and not in oh. Japanese <laughs> there was no directions <laughs> that into Japanese <laughs> but. I, I just think it's a lot of fun. I'm always like amazed as I go through the fact they had to create it so that it it looks interesting from 360 degrees. Because mm. normally in a dark ride, they can just place the, the lights behind you so that right. you can't see them, but it still illuminates everything. But they couldn't do that in Roger Rabbit because you're, you have the capability of going around in a circle. It is very interactive, for sure. Um, and so I've always really enjoyed that. Although I will say there are moments where I'm like, if a child doesn't like clowns, they're not going to like this ride. It's very um, loud, too. <laughs> and it can get really loud in your face. But I I enjoy it. Do I think that it was it that I think do I think it's the most amazing ride ever? No, but I do try if we can to go on it because I do really enjoy it. Well, especially if you get to use Genie Plus, then I enjoy it more. Yeah. If I'm waiting in the standby line. And I the line was hate so, it. so painful. You think you go around a corner and you're like, it's still going. This is such yeah. a tiny ride, but how am I still in line? Right? It's the worst. <laughs> I will give you that. Mine is Storybook Land Canal Boats. He <gasps> yes, hit it that's from mine. me for the longest time. I did not. Yes, you <laughs> did. Yes, you did. You didn't, you didn't tell me it existed. I was not a Disneyland person prior to meeting you. And then we go on it and I was like, there are just the yeah. tiny little houses and tiny trees and huge ducks. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one too. I think it's totally underrated and it's just the cutest. Have you been at Christmas time? No. I think oh, they, they did we? I don't know. I want to say well, yes. They put little, little decorations on the houses. They Shoot. put like little lights and little mini wreaths. It's so cute. And do your impression of the the cast members. Because when you go on, there is a script that they're following, and I know that they work really hard to perfect it, but all you hear is... (laughs) 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 Yep, that's all you hear. (laughs) You're not on it for the narration. You're on it for the little diorama. You're sitting two feet from Mm -hmm. them, and and you still are from 1912. Well, that and I also do like Casey Jr. Just because you get to see Fantasyland and the Storybook Land Canal Boats from a whole different vantage point that you don't ever see it from. So I do like we were, Casey Jr. We were trying to go on Casey Jr. a few trips ago and it said, oh, there's only a 10 minute wait. And we were just standing in one place for like 15 minutes. We're like, we're yeah. leaving. Well, like one flies. thing with us, like I will say, I think Casey Jr. is uh, is a lot of fun. Unless you're as tall as we are, yeah, and then they're like them. shoving you in the tiniest car, and we're like, well, this isn't necessarily <laughs> the easiest one. <laughs> if we were smaller human beings, it would be a lot more. Annoying. It is made for children. It know. is made for children. <laughs> it's not with us in mind. Nope. <laughs> okay, what about your favorite um, souvenir to get at Disneyland? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's hard. I will say that for a time it was a pin, like pins. I feel like the last few years their pin designers have been a little bit subpar there was a time Mm -hmm. a couple of years ago where it was like i want all of these um i'm very surprised that pins have still been a thing after like what 30 years now (laughs) yeah Yeah, they're going strong they're still pretty much as strong as ever 
So I will say the thing that I that I always really, really enjoy, and it's just because I know that I'll get a lot of use out of it. I like a good Disney Disneyland shirt or Disney shirt, but that's not like overt. I, like the more subtle mm-hmm. the the nod, the more that I love it. So that people who know can look and then we have this like moment of like, I know what that is, but yeah. that everyone else they don't they don't know I'm just wearing a Disneyland shirt every day because I do. Mm-hmm. In, there are shirts that I wear that I only wear at Disneyland, but I'm like, but if I can get a lot of use out of this, that's where I really, really enjoy it. Unfortunately, those kind of shirts are a little bit fur- fewer and farther between anymore. But. And and the, Dis- the Walt Disney Company makes the cutest shirts for children and women. And yes. children and women. Not, not, for, not, for men. not for men, just so you know. Yeah, I agree. I always see the so cutest annoying. shirts for kids. It's like, why? Why is this not in an adult size? Yeah. Can I squeeze into an extra large? No, <laughs> I've tried. I'm like, can't, no, I cannot. Okay. No. No. But I do hold it up. I'm like, maybe. Yep. Mm-mm. Yep. <laughs> no. I don't know. Uh, when a, when you, a stuffed animal is amazing. I, I would say you like the shoulder pals. Yeah, the shoulder pals mm. and just stuffed animals. But then when we went to Tokyo, their stuffed animals are 6,000 times better than America's. So Yeah, that is true. <laughs> They have such a cute variety, and they're like half the price. So. But you can see we do have a lot of stuffed toys. Yes, like from Disney parks. So we have we have plenty. That's just so a small fun. fragment of them. So, so that would be well, really I'm cool. a sucker for Disney sweatshirts. If I see a good one, yeah, I, I have ones. so many. I don't need any more sweatshirts. But then you see one, and you're like, well, <laughs> I have are you to. just sweatshirts or sweatshirts and spirit jerseys? No, I can't do a spirit jersey. I don't look good in them. Some people look amazing, but I, it is not me. So you just focus on the sweatshirts. Yeah. Yep. Which is for the best. I don't need another thing. To- I don't understand why the spirit jerseys uh, are the, the sleeves are six inches too short. Yeah. That's my only problem. I, with yeah. them. I usually like slightly roll them up. But anyway. Some people look great in them. And I do He's, not. Dan's actually one of them. Yeah. He pulls off some that I'm like, that's not going to look good on me ever. Gonna... And then he wears them. I'm like, see? My only there problem with buying yeah. long sleeve stuff is there's only like three months at Disneyland <laughs> only that you can wear them. We can't wear them at Disney World. <laughs> can't True. wear them on cruises. Can't wear them at Alani. So. We could wear them on a cruise True. if we went to like an Alaska yeah, cruise. Alaska, maybe. But I just wear them at home all the time because yeah. I'm always cold at home. It's always cold here in Utah. So I get, I get my use out of them. There you go. That's what I tell myself anyway. It's fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> Pay the $112. But I'm going to wear it all this American merchandise for some reason. Yeah, go to Tokyo. Those will be like $30. I'm not kidding. Right? It's nice. Okay, what about favorite entertainment? Can we say Rogers? <laughs> sure, you can say Rogers. <laughs> for the, even, though even though it's going away in minutes. a few days. Yeah. I know. Gosh, well, I'll put that out there because it's really good in case anyone's there in the next couple of weeks. Oh, go but, go if you can. Um, oh, and I was going to say Wondrous Journeys. Again, problem. Again, leaving. I know. It's okay. You can still say <sighs> stuff that are leaving. Paint the Night was mine, but that'll never come back. <laughs> we, miss, we really love things that have gone. God. Paint the Night was good. I loved Paint the Night. Oh, gosh. Okay, let's. I'll go with this then because it's there and we know it's going to stay for a while. Magic Happens. Yes. I love Magic Happens. You do love the annoying song. He does not like a ma- Magic Happens. <laughs> cannot stand the song. I hate daytime parades, period, because really? they're, they're always in the way. I'm trying to get from one side of the park. Well, the only the time, time I get to watch him is if I beg and yeah. say, I want yeah. to see this parade. He goes, fine. I hate daytime parades. <laughs> they ruin everything. Um, <laughs> I think in general, like fireworks slash projection shows, because you just get to stand there and enjoy it. It's a nice end to the evening. Yeah. Oh, and World I of Color. Agree. I agree. I would know. say that too. All the things. Yeah. I love the fireworks show, the projections, all that. I do love the Main Street Electrical Parade, though. That just is has like childhood memories yeah. tied to it. That one's good. It doesn't for They'll me. Probably bring that one back eventually. Yeah, I'm sure that they will. Every time that leaves, they're like, hurry before it's gone. I'm like, yeah, but you'll probably bring it back in like you'll three or four years. <laughs> yeah. What about what's your favorite time of year to visit? Ooh, mine is Halloween, which is funny because growing up, 
couldn't care less about Halloween. <laughs> yeah. In general. Well, Halloween at Disney is different than normal Halloween. It is. That was actually the first yeah. time I realized I even enjoy Halloween even a little bit was going uh, to Disneyland at Halloween time. I just love like the pumpkins on Main Street, um, Cars Land, the way that's decked out. And then Oogie Boogie Bash is everything that I actually do. Because I don't like scary things, but I like creepy things. Yeah, spooky. So, yeah. And so I always like Nightmare Before Christmas a lot. And Oogie Boogie Bash is that type of of entertainment. Like, it's spooky. Villains, not scary. Villains Grove. Just Villains. spooky. I love yes. Villain Grove. It's so amazing. Um, and so the very first time that we went during Halloween season, I was like, this this is my this is my time of year i i do like halloween but it's also around the time of my birthday and that's more important so uh <laughs> probably christmas we've actually never been on christmas i want to do it sometime but i don't want to go on, on christmas, christmas day oh christmas time is good yeah um i'm gonna say halloween until christmas and then christmas because <laughs> <laughs> they're both favorites but I do love Lunar New Year. That one's really growing on me. Yep. That's a fun time so to be in the park. Yeah. With Hortensia. She was so cute. Yes. And yeah. Oswald being there. Oh, that was such a they were so adorable. But Halloween for now, until we hit November. And then I'm And then switching. November it'll be Christmas. Oogie Boogie yeah. is very fun. It is. Okay. That's one of the things I was gonna ask you. What is your favorite after hours event that you've ever been to? Have we been to more than two? Just Star Wars and Oogie Boogie, right? Oh, so you have two to Mickey's, pick from. We did Mickey's, whatever, not or Halloween party. Not that was oh yeah, when they used to do Mickey's Halloween party. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, my favorite was Oogie Boogie Bash by far. Mm -hmm. um, the Star the, Wars night should have been good, but they they let too many people in. The problem with the after hours events, like the Disneyland After Dark events, that I feel is that they're not long enough for everything that they're offering. And mm -hmm. so you have to choose either food or characters or rides, and you can't really do a well, very plus they good have the entertainment of the too, three. which is hard. Um, yeah. Whereas Oogie Boogie lasts long enough that you can you have to plan out your night, mm -hmm. but you can get everything done at Oogie Boogie if you stay the whole night. Right. Well, I love Oogie Boogie because they're smart with meeting the villains because you're the villains are up on a stage and you walk by them and you can yep. take a selfie. Yep. And then you keep moving so everyone gets to see them. But like well, I went to Princess Night and it was a joke because the princess, each princess, the line was an hour long Jeez. to meet her. I'm like, why don't they do it like Oogie Boogie? Put them up on a platform and people can walk by, wave, say hi, take a picture, then move on with their lives. We're mad we were busy yeah. for Pride Night. That would have been. I would have loved oh, to yeah. have gone to Pride Night. I hope that becomes a regular thing. I think Oogie Boogie's done the best, and it does. They don't let in ninety eight percent of capacity. Like, <laughs> yeah. all Walt Disney World after hours events, they let in ninety nine percent of capacity. It's, <laughs> it's a joke too. Uh, if Star Wars Night would have been done better, I would love. It. it was a cool idea and had so much good stuff, but it was not done well. Like, it didn't live up to our expectations. Yeah. Right. I agree. So far, Oogie Boogie has been the best for me, yep. too. OK, a couple more questions. Okay. What is an attraction from another park that you wish would come to Disneyland? Oh, no, we went to so many parks. Oh, I, I thought I was going to have an easy question, an easy answer. Um, ah, the Beauty and the Beast ride at Tokyo, maybe. I don't know. I've There's heard no that one's amazing. It, so, so glorious. Oh, crap. Um, I think I'm going to stick with my, with my thought. Um, uh, yeah, by the way, the Beauty and the Beast ride, dear Disney, if you could just decide to spend that money, they won't, they won't, but if they ever decided to just go for it, it would be amazing. So good. Um, if space weren't an option, I actually prefer Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind way mm. over, um, Mission Breakout. Really? So much more. Yeah. So good. I haven't been on it yet. They could just do it like over Harbor and then like tear down a few of the yeah. hotels, just, like Smart. go over on the five. Yeah, it would be perfect. It's a good use of space. Yeah, we don't need all of those hotels. <laughs> no, for sure. No, uh, I don't know. I don't even know if I can answer this question because I've only been to Disney World and Disneyland. But I do like the Frozen ride over at Disney World. I think that one's cute. adorable. That would be fun to have. That's a controversial one. People still want Maelstrom back. I know. <laughs> it was yeah. not that great. It wasn't. We're we're the two that sit in the front row on that unfrozen ever after and just 
Like, uh-huh, it's just so, so magical the whole time. I love it. It is. Although, yes. Elsa last time was just was standing there. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't moving. She's like, <laughs> no, her face. No, her face was moving because you know it's projection. So yes, she, projection was body. still going, but the figure yeah, wasn't moving. Just the limits and breakthrough. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to ignore it as much as I could. There was one time she didn't have a face. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> it, was very, it was only awkward because if you don't know, when those projections are off, the it's screen black. is black. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's Elsa with a black face. And you're like, a little ah. culturally inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is your favorite like hidden gem or hidden Easter egg or like little detail that maybe people don't know about around the parks? So I'm, it's hard for me because I I love Disneyland history, and so I look at a lot of places and I'm like, I know where that came from. Uh huh. Um, actually, like one of mine, and it's just because people don't even pay attention that it's there, and I love thinking about it. Is in Tomorrowland on top in, in the very center. You see up top, there's like this statue or this like yeah, this figure, the statue that just never moves, and it just like looks like it has satellite dishes or something on it, and yeah. that used to be. A lot of people don't know that it used to be the rocket jets, like the equivalent of mm-hmm. the Astro Orbiter. And mm-hmm. then when they were converting to Marland in the 1990s, they just decided let's turn it into like a kinetic sculpture. That didn't last very many years before they just stopped turning it on. But that is that is the ride. Like if you just took yeah. off the satellite dishes and put rockets on it, it is the yeah. actual ride system. And so every time I look up, they're like, see, Disney history. Unfortunately, it's it there. hasn't been turned on in years. Yeah. Probably doesn't work. That's a good one. I'm sure it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> I don't even know. I love the Peter Pan tree. That's my favorite because it fits in with my favorite ride. Have you seen the Peter Pan tree where the, Peter's carved his initials into the tree? It's over by Snow White's Grotto. Hmm. Oh, oh, wait. And there's a tree and it says P uh, and P plus W. I actually think and I there's a little one. arrow. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love that's that. So, that's so cute. I really can't think of anything. <laughs> That's okay. We can do top two for that one. Yeah, probably just a top two. <laughs> okay, last question. This is a good one. What is your favorite Disneyland memory? Oh, wow. You have to pour over. I know. That's a hard one. The visits for that one. I do remember, and I think I think it was with Disneyland Forever, which was actually why. So the, the fireworks show Disneyland Forever is actually why our podcast is called Disneyland forever because I love oh, it yeah. so much. Mm-hmm. And I remember watching it. I think it was one of the first times I watched it and I was already excited because it you know it premiered for Disneyland's 60th anniversary. And so and they're like it's going to be all about the history of Disney or celebrating the history of Disney and Disney parks. And I just remember sitting there watching it and by the end I was just bawling because mm-hmm. I just thought it was so magical. I loved the theme song to it. I just loved the history that it pulled. Uh, it was the very first time they ever had a fireworks show that was really using the projections. So being surrounded by everything on Main Street was just, it felt so immersive. And I, j- I just didn't know how to handle everything. And it was like, this is everything that I love put together in a way that's just so amazing that I just remember just the first time watching it, I was just in tears the whole time and i remember because he made fun of me for it you cry all the time for everything not that much that's true not all the time (laughs) wondrous journeys was pretty close wondrous journeys was pretty close oh it's well it's amazing uh so one time we were we did three separate nights for some reason i I don't remember why we did (laughs) oh and the the each night we had a different hotel room right yeah so we had like with our DVC points, I couldn't get contiguous. So we had one night at Grand California, and then we actually had to go to the Anaheim Hotel, and then we went back to a DVC room at the Grand Californian. We get there the first night, and they're they're like they're typing it in. They said, uh, "This is interesting." Um, well, let me go talk to our my manager. So they can go back, come back. Uh, so they've they double booked the room type that the dvc have, room the dvc room the actual mm-hmm. like room so we're gonna actually put you in a suite in the hotel what? side because nice. we booked a one bedroom villa and so they yeah. wanted to still give us a one bedroom uh-huh. so yeah we, we stayed in the el capitan suite for one night 
That's that so cool. It's evidently like four thousand dollars a night or I something. I think it's something if you, like if that. If you pay for it, and it was so glorious, it had a bidet, it had a dining room. <laughs> nice. We spent a lot of time just in the room because we're like, we can yeah. go to Disneyland anytime. <laughs> it's the one that actually has a balcony that looks over that looks over Grizzly Peak. So you oh, open cool. up and go out on the balcony, and it's right over Grizzly Peak. It was so great. Oh, so we just spent amazing. a lot of time in the room. Yeah, it was wonderful. <laughs> yeah. We stayed in that room until checkout time. Yep. That's amazing. Um, I think my favorite was probably the time we took our youngest, who was three at the time, to Disneyland. And she loved Mickey Mouse, everything Mickey Mouse. She had like Mickey Mouse underwear and Mickey Mouse pajamas. And it was just Mickey Mouse all the time. And then seeing her meet Mickey Mouse was just amazing. Aww, she ran to she him and she's hugging him and I'm bawling. My mom was there. <laughs> she was crying. And I'm telling my husband, this is why... This is why we pay all this money to come here because of this memory. And she doesn't remember it, but I remember it. And it's just. But you favorite. remember it. And that's what's important. Yep. Yeah. We had some friends exactly. on one talking about like little kids and saying like, do you do these things for little kids? And they were, our friend was like, I don't care. I'm going to remember it. And I'm like, see, exactly. that's what's important about it. Yep. Yep. For sure. Well, that was fun. Thanks for chatting with me. Those are good questions. Yes. You stumped me on one. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to go spend all night thinking about it. Huh? Gems of things. <laughs> that was fun. Well, I'm going to put links to all of your stuff in my show notes. So people can check out your stuff. You guys are awesome. That was really fun. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. 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 Thank you so much to Dan and Jordan for joining me. It was always fun to hang out with them. They're really great. Make sure you check out their links in my show notes. You can go and follow them and check out their podcast as well. Well, thank you for being here this week. And next week is going to be all about VIP tours. So don't miss that episode. It's going to be great. Remember, you can find me over on Instagram at Mix and Some Magic. I also have a website, mixandsomemagic.com, that has so many helpful resources. Go and check that out if you have any questions. There's crowd calendars over there. There's information about each individual month. So if you're thinking about visiting Disneyland in November, you can go search for November. And it will pop up a whole guide to Disneyland in November telling you everything you need to know. There's information about rope dropping and Genie Plus, all kinds of things over there. So go and check it out. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate you. I will be back next week with something new. Thanks so much for listening. We'll talk soon. <laughs>